Hey guys, this is Natasha and welcome to my channel Natasha's Russia. Guys, we are in Veliki Luki. This is also a small town uh, close to my village and we are departing from here today at 8 p.m. But we came to discover the city a little bit and see what they have. Let's go, I see. Veliki Luki is a town with a rich history, great past and big future. Veliki Luki is an ancient fortress in a vast swampy area further north of Vitebsk, between river Slopat and western Dvina, the same river that you saw in my previous video from Polotsk. A fortress on important crossing of the roads from Leningrad, Kiev, from Moscow to Belarus and the Baltics. The first mention of the town is dated back to 1166 and throughout its history it was used to protect Pskov and Novgorod from invaders from the west. And during the ancient times it was a trading center through which the famous road from the Varangians to the Greeks passed. This is a museum of victory. Victory. Veliki Luki always played a big strategic role. No wonder it was called the mantle of Novgorod and the atrium of Moscow. The inhabitants of the town were the first who stood up to defend the borders of the motherland. Veliki Luki was completely destroyed again and again throughout history. This was the case during the Livonian and the Northern Wars, the War of 1812 and, of course, the Great Patriotic War. The most fierce and bloody battles were fought in the city against the German fascist invaders. That's why Veliki Luki was named Small or Northern Stalingrad. The town is famous for many well-known people. Maybe you know at least two of them. Rakasovsky, the Marshal of the USSR, and Sofia Kovalevska, the world's first female professor of mathematics. I'm at the local museum, which is quite small actually, it's only one room. But uh, there is excursion and Isa is listening to them. This is the monument to Alexander Matrosov, who became a symbol of Veliki Luki. In the battle in the village close to Veliki Luki in 1943, a 19-year-old kid blocked the German machine gun with his body. As a result, his group fulfilled the military mission. Matrosov wasn't the only one who sacrificed his life, but his name was used to glorify the heroism of Soviet soldiers. See the keep memories of each hero. There are colonels, mayors, and people who took part in the Second World War. And the dates just in front. We are going to take a boat. Isa wants to take a boat to swim in this, I don't know this by the way, river. I think it's a river. Let's see this coronavirus, but you see they have boats, which is quite nice. In the same piece work you can't rent it right now. A lot of fish, a lot of fish, look. I look at this water, I see, I feel like I want to swim right now. They say that this is archaeological monument of 12 Century. Let's go climb and see. After months of heavy fighting during World War II, 
The German defenders were finally defeated in January 1943. The town was almost completely destroyed. Oh, man. Even Asia is tired, you see. We climb all of this. Estonians were fighting here together with Russians, and the Estonian sculpture of the monument, Mark Port, decided to create this obelisk of glory. The obelisk stands as a symbol of military brotherhood and victory achieved through the joint efforts of soldiers and officers of different nationalities. This is local fortification of 12th century. Used to be, you see, it's built according to the order of Peter the Great. All of this area. Up until 1704, the fortifications were rebuilt many times. But during the Northern War, the Russian Emperor decided to build a fortress city with six bastions and two gates. I don't know guys, maybe I'm becoming old, but this climbing going up and down makes me feel tired. Or maybe I didn't sleep today well. Inside the fortress there were barracks, smithies, a prison, two orthodox cathedrals, shops and other structures. The fortress was fortified with cannons and mortars. Very uncomfortable road. Probably that's why they used horses. This bastion used to protect the entrance to the fortress. You see? Что? Let's climb. I saw uh, a tank there, so we are going to climb this hill. Вон туда, смотри! And there's tank! On the northwestern bastion, there is a monument to the tank men who liberated the Veliki Luki fortress. The memorial is a genuine example of the T-34 tank. During the assault of the fortress in 1943, all buildings inside the fortification were destroyed. The last battle on the territory of the fortress took place in January 1943, when Russian troops defeated the German army. By the way, here is something about Russian weather forecast. You see, it's very sunny. It's hot. I think it's plus 29 or something like that. I feel super hot. But they promised yesterday that it's gonna be rain, cloudy and cold. So... Exploding. Child's labor, you see. Okay. Like we are not in the city, but we are like a kind of jungle. Modern Veliki Luki is an industrial, transport and cultural center of the Pskov region. Since 1996, the town has hosted international hot air balloon competitions. The town is called the capital of modern Russian aeronautics. Unfortunately, I have never attended it, and last summer everything was cancelled because of Covid. Veliki Luki is a city from which many tourist roads begin. I feel super hot after these boats. Пошли, Ася. Ася is trying to get something from these trees and we are going to the main square. Let's see how it looks in this city. Passing by the local mall. And behind us is the main street. We are on the main square, 
this is the administration building here and there was a concert or something like this I wonder what's, what was the year that we were there celebrating And in front of the administration building, there is the hotel, I think one of the most famous. Look, very interesting radiators. Soviet skin. So the population is decreasing, now it's less than 100,000 people. Veliki Luki is a town with a great economic potential. The industry of the city is represented by all branches of production. Machine building, electrical, textile, printing, light and food industries are developing successfully. A lot of things have changed since I was here last time. It's nice, small, provincial, how do you call it, countryside, city, greenery, calm. I didn't have enough time to move around more. From the first glance, the town looks like it's taken care of. Small businesses, malls, fresh air, clean water and a lot of greenery. If you would ask me, would I choose this town for living? I would say yes, this town definitely feels like home. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. See, I told you, there is no city without Lenin in Russia. We used to arrive here to this train station and trains from here used to go to Belarus, to my village right now. They can't solve it. Yeah. This is civilization. Water inside toilet. Uh, this is something here. Toilets are absolutely awful. I think I showed it to you before. Our trip that lasted half a month is over, almost over. We are waiting for, Hello, guys. for our train to go back to St. Petersburg. we are going home. It's very hot here. This is not an average train. This is uh, higher quality trains. You see, we go only four of us, but actually we're three right now. Probably somebody is gonna join us later on. Even you see during the coronavirus still there are people.